Hi folks, welcome to this video on the aerobic energy system, okay? This is the one that has the most content to it. So you've got to be aware of it, stick with us through it, okay? It's going to start very, very similar, in fact almost identical to the lactic acid energy system. What do we need to know about the aerobic energy system? Well, I can get one molecule of glucose and I can break it down, okay? And if you remember, we called that process glycolysis, okay? And from that breakdown of one molecule of glucose, I'm going to get enough energy to resynthesize 2 ATP. And I'm also going to get pyruvic acid, a.k.a pyruvate okay so so far it is absolutely identical to the lactic acid system however there's a slight little twist or a change as well as breaking down glucose I can also break down fats and I can also break down proteins okay so I can use all three energy sources all, all of these three energy sources, sorry, during whilst I'm using my aerobic energy system. Now, glucose, the breakdown of glucose was known as glycolysis. When you break down fats, it has its own special name. And that name is beta oxidation. Okay? So far, it's identical to the lactic acid system and if you remember in the lactic acid system when there was no oxygen available that turned to lactic acid or lactate well here's the thing look at the name of the system it's aerobic that's not going to happen I'm going to have oxygen available so that is not going to take place so let's get rid of it. So I suppose the question is, what happens to this pyruvic acid now? If it doesn't turn into lactic acid, what happens to it? Well, the pyruvic or the pyruvic acid enters a mystical, wonderful cycle called Krebs cycle. Okay. Now, what can we say about Krebs cycle is this takes place in something called a mitochondria. Now a mitochondria is a power station. Not actually one, but that's basically what it does. It produces high levels of energy. So the Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondria in a cell. In every cell in your body, there's mitochondria. Okay, or the vast majority of cells in your body is mitochondria. They produce energy via this reaction. So we've got glucose, fats, or protein. One molecule has been broken down. It's released energy for 2 ATP, and it's produced pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Because I have oxygen, because it's aerobic, that doesn't turn into lactic acid. Instead, it enters something called Krebs cycle in the mitochondria of the cell. What happens as a result of Krebs cycle? Well, many things happen. I get CO2 produced and things like that. I get H2O produced. But more crucially, I get energy to resynthesize another 2 ATP by this pyruvic acid getting broken down in this Krebs cycle. And I also get lots of things called... H plus ions or hydrogen atoms, whichever you prefer. Hydrogen ions, hydrogen atoms, it doesn't matter. Okay? Now, what is going to happen to these? They then enter the third and final stage of the aerobic system, something called the electron transport chain. Okay? which again takes place in the mitochondria, okay? So Krebs, 
Glycolysis doesn't take place in the mitochondria, but Krebs in the electron transport chain both take place in the mitochondria, okay? So the electron transport chain, what can we say about it? Well, the hydrogen atoms enter it and there's nothing else to say other than as a result of them entering it, a lot of energy is produced. So much so that I can then resynthesize 32 to 34 more ATP off the back of this energy system, okay? Now, if you watch the video on the lactic acid system, you'll remember I said one of the downsides to it was that when you broke down glucose, you got a low energy yield, i.e. you didn't produce much energy from the breakdown of glucose, only 2 ATP. Look what's happened here. That one molecule of glucose, or fat or protein, has produced 2, 4, 36 to 38 ATP. So it's produced massively high levels of energy okay so the total yield of this system is 36 to 38 ATP however what's the downside to it this takes time I can only use it sorry, or during sorry submaximal activities marathon tour de france long distance running cycling swimming whatever it is why this energy production is not rapid it's going to take minutes usain bolt tries to use his aerobic system for the 100 meters he's going to come last okay this is system is not going to be up and running properly fully effectively until he's finished his lap of honor so it's going to take time to use this system okay so it's the perfect system if you are like this young lady here going for a long distance run because you've got time to get all the fuels ready, you know, to go through glycolysis, to go through Krebs, to go through electron transport chain. She's going to produce very high levels of energy over a long period of time, which is exactly what she needs to do long distance running. Okay, so the aerobic system is only beneficial to submax or is only used during submaximal activities. However, what you're doing now sitting still is submaximal. When you're sleeping, that's submaximal. Any time that you are taking on board high levels of oxygen, in contrast to your activity, so you might be thinking, well, I'm not taking on board high levels of oxygen sitting still, but you are sitting still, so you're taking on board plenty of oxygen to suit the demands of your activity, so that is a submaximal activity. Any time you're doing that, you're producing oxygen aerobically. How long does this system last? Well, forever, fingers crossed. Well, not forever, but... As long as you've got oxygen and as long as you've got fuel to burn, carbs, fats and proteins, you will use the system. It will see you out for your lifetime. So this isn't one that runs out after 10 seconds or 2 minutes or stops working after that amount of time. As long as you've got oxygen and as long as you've got fuel, you will use your aerobic system. Okay?